Today, I'm gonna to tell you what it's really like to live in Seattle, Washington. As always, I'm Bryce Greenleaf, local real estate agent here in the Seattle area. I've lived here my entire life and I specialize in helping people relocate over to this area. So if that sounds like you, you're looking to relocate over here and find the right place to live, feel free to reach out, I'd be happy to help. But I've put some thought here into what are some of the most important things you need to know before you make the move over to the Seattle area. Now, the first one is cost of living. This is one of the most common questions that people ask and consider when they're coming over here. Of course, Seattle is going to be more expensive than most other parts of the country. Axios recently rated Seattle as the ninth most expensive place in the U.S. to live, with many cities in California and on the East Coast, like New York and Boston, being more expensive. But Seattle, of course, being a coastal city and all that's offered here in Seattle with high-paying jobs and everything else we're going to get into on this list is, of course, one of the more expensive places to live. Now, this primarily comes through home prices bestplaces.net does a great cost breakdown and you can compare cities to cities and really see what the overall cost is for each category in a specific city and it has categories like healthcare and utilities rated as cheaper than the national average prices now one thing not factored on to this list here and and really these rankings that you'll see online is the taxes in a specific area when you look at these cost of living calculators and breakdowns now this is an important aspect to consider because in Washington in the Seattle area here there is no income tax so that can save you quite a bit now our sales tax is hovering right around 10% our property tax compared to a lot of places in the US actually seems quite doable somebody in Texas told me their property tax rate was three three and a half percent which is absolutely crazy here in the seattle area in washington it's not one specific percentage that it's calculated off of there's lots of levies that factor into it but typically you'll see anywhere from three quarters of a percent to just over one percent for those property taxes category number two here is the weather what is the weather like here in the seattle area so we live in a very mild climate really you get four seasons of mild weather. So of course in the summer times, that's the best time to be here in the Seattle area. It's probably the best place you can be in the country in the summer in my opinion. It's absolutely gorgeous. It very, very rarely gets too hot where you don't wanna go outside. Average temperatures are right in the, the upper 70s, low 80s through the summer. Very rarely does it get above you know, 90 degrees. You might get some stretches here and there with a few days where it gets above 90, but it is not that common. On the flip side to that, in the winter time, average temperatures, daily highs really hover in the low 40s to mid 40s. You will get some times where you're under freezing, you're, you know, upper 20s, uh, low 30s. That is certainly common. We don't get pounded with snow over here. It is a uh, see what it's January mid January right now when I'm filming this video we have yet to get much of a snowfall at all this year we got a, a dusting of snow uh, last week and it melted within a couple of hours um, so really no snow at all this year um, you might get one quote-unquote snowstorm a year here in the Seattle area but snow is not a big factor now things to do here in the Seattle area. Now this is where it gets fun. On the west side, of course, we are on the Puget Sound. So you have the water there. So if you wanna take a ferry over for a day trip, you don't wanna just visit one of the beautiful beaches. You wanna uh, launch a, a paddle board somewhere, uh, take out a boat, go fishing. There's so much that you can do. You can go kayaking. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot all along the Puget Sound there. As we move more inland, we have lakes everywhere. So if you wanna launch the boat and uh, go wakeboard or tubing or just hang out on a nice day on the lake in the boat uh, you want to go to one of the many many parks around these lakes with the kids and let them go swimming and play around again launch a paddleboard or a kayak um, there's so much that you can do and take advantage of all the lakes up and down the entire Seattle metropolitan area. And then as we move further east, we have the Cascade Mountain Ranges. So there's a lot of different opportunities for hiking and mountain biking, snowshoeing, skiing, and snowboarding, no matter where in the Seattle metropolitan area you are. We're not just talking about Seattle proper on this video. We're talking about the whole Seattle metropolitan area. So whether you're on the far north side or the far south side, you are gonna have opportunities for the, that mountainous outdoor recreation 
pretty close to where you live. So let's talk about some of the best neighborhoods and suburbs here in the Seattle area. Now I mentioned this video is not just about Seattle proper. We're talking about the entire Seattle metropolitan as a whole. That is because the majority of you are, are a, a high percentage of you that have reached out to me here from YouTube over the last three to four years and that I've helped relocate and purchase a home over here. The majority of you have not moved into Seattle proper. A lot of you have moved into those surrounding suburbs, whether it's Snohomish County to the north, Pierce County to the south, or somewhere else in King County outside of Seattle. So this video is about the entire area. Now, if we're talking about just Seattle proper here, when we're looking at some of the best neighborhoods and places to live, this is completely subjective to your opinion and, and what your lifestyle is really looking for. But I often find that those that are looking in Seattle proper often want to be to the north side of Seattle proper. So you're talking about neighborhoods like Green Lake and Ballard and Greenwood and Finney Ridge and University District and Ravenna. There's so many great neighborhoods here on the north side of Seattle uh, that provide a very nice lifestyle. If we go outside of Seattle proper, you have the east side just east of Lake Washington here. Now this is the most expensive place over here you can live. This is cities like Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Issaquan, Sammamish. This is where uh, a lot of people move into when they're taking those high paying jobs in these areas. So there's a lot of very nice neighborhoods, a lot of luxury homes, some of the best school districts in the state right in this east side corridor so this is you know one of the most desirable if not the most desirable section of uh, the, the whole washington area when it comes to that kind of stuff but it is going to be the most expensive which we'll talk about here in just a second on this video but it is going to be the most expensive area to live if you go north in snohomish county this is a very very popular destination for people to go to if they don't want to be in seattle proper and they can't quite afford to live on that east side a lot of people have really fallen in love with Snohomish County. There's a lot of great cities up here. You can have cities like Linwood and Shoreline and Mount Lake Terrace, which are going to provide opportunities to be closer to the city. Edmonds as well, where you, if you need to commute into Seattle, that commute's not going to be too bad. You can go further to the northeast side if you want something with like a small historic downtown feel and a little bit of a semi-rural lifestyle where you can get bigger pieces of property and a little bit more land and a little bit more peace and quiet. Places like Snohomish and Lake Stevens and Monroe and Arlington provide those types of lifestyles. And then Everett right in the middle, you have a nice big downtown area up there with plenty of surrounding neighborhoods outside of downtown Everett that provide a nice, nice lifestyle too. So there's a number of great places to live up there. As you go south into Pierce County, this is where I see the least amount of people moving to that I personally help out that relocate after seeing me here on YouTube. This is the least common destination, but this is going to be the most affordable destination. Again, we'll talk about in a second, um, but you're going to have a lot of cities through here south of Seattle in King County. You've got to Tacoma down south, which provides a lot more opportunity to buy a home for a more affordable price. But overall, some great places to live here in the Seattle metropolitan area. Now we talked about those home prices and those home prices are gonna vary depending where you are. Of course, they're gonna be more expensive than the national average. In Seattle, the median residential home price in Seattle proper is 840,000. The median condo price in Seattle proper is 590,000. In King County, as a whole, the median home price residential is 850,000 with the median condo price being 560,000. Now, if you go to the east side here, that kind of that most desirable spot that I talked about on the east side, those cities like Bellevue, Kirkland, uh, Redmond, Sammamish, and uh, Issaquah, those median home prices are gonna hover between 1.3 and 1.6, 1.7 million for those median prices. It is the most expensive place to live, but some really, really great neighborhoods and, and overall just a great atmosphere. If you go up north to Snohomish County, the median residential home price right now is 680,000 with the median condo price being 524,000. So you can see you get a little bit more of a break on those home prices as you start to move further north and get into Snohomish County. On the opposite side, if you head south into Pierce County, those prices drop even further. Residential homes in Pierce County, 
535,000 for that median price. For condos, it's 380,000. So you can see quite a big drop off in those home prices as you go south there. So you can also factor those into kind of the desirability factor. The more expensive the area is, like the east side, the more desirable, the more people there are trying to get into that area. And then P Pierce County on the far south side and the lowest end for the home prices, the least amount of people I see going into those areas. Now let's talk about some of the annoying things with living in the Seattle metropolitan area. We mentioned the weather a little bit. The trade-off to not having extreme temperatures, like I mentioned, is we have more gray and drizzly weather. You're gonna get about 160, 170 days of sunshine a year, and the other half of the year, you're gonna get a lot of gray overcast days where you're not gonna see much sunshine at all. Along with that comes a lot of drizzly type rain. You see that, or you hear that Seattle is one of the rain cities in the US. If you actually look at annual rainfall amounts, Seattle's not even close to being on the top of uh, the list for the rainiest cities in America. That is because we don't get torrential downpours very often. We have a lot of light rain, drizzly, misty. So we get a good amount of number of days with that rain. It could start kind of misting and drizzly in the morning and then clear out uh, in the afternoon. But that is very common to have long stretches with having very gray weather. Another annoying factor here is traffic. Now, if you come from California, I've been told many times from people that have relocated here from California that our traffic is not that bad when they're coming from the Bay or LA. Uh, for those of you that are not coming from California, we probably have pretty bad traffic to you. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're going to have to factor in if you're working in a specific location and going to have to be commuting to that job. You need to factor in commute times before you completely decide on where you're going to live. All right. And the last category I'll talk about here is the public transportation. So if you are living right in Seattle proper, you're going to have a number of options uh, from streetcars to the light rail system to bus. Is. There's a number of different options to get in and around the Seattle proper area. If you are living in the Seattle metropolitan area, you are going to be very car dependent. You need to have a car to live in most of these areas. Like I said, you can live in urban Seattle or urban uh, Bellevue and get away with not having a car and some other spots like Kirkland and Redmond you might be able to get away with it but most of the other suburbs outside of those areas you will need a car now we do have the light rail system which is going to help a lot of people continually as it expands further and further currently it runs as far north as Northgate north of Seattle and goes down to the airport this is our train system um, so it's super convenient to get to and from some areas and saves you some hassle with parking driving dealing with traffic all that kind of stuff it is expanding to the east side cities like i mentioned bellevue and redmond so that's going to be a big help for commuters over there so if that's an option for you there's a lot of people that will take that light rail if they currently work in downtown seattle they'll park at one of the light rail stations park their car and then take the train the rest of the way down so they don't have to try and park in downtown seattle or deal with all that traffic so that is a bit of a help. But that wraps up my video here on some of the things you should really know about being in the Seattle area and what it's really like to live here. Like I said, I help people relocate to this area. So if you want to schedule a discovery session with me, feel free to reach out to me directly or just go to my Calendly link down in the description and schedule a call with me. I look forward to it. And thanks for watching this one.